Welcome. This is a lesson on issue trees. This is a module from 2020 Delivery Academy to help you methodically get underneath the problem and break it down into manageable segments. The aim of the issue tree is to provide a structured approach to problem solving, which should give you the confidence and your team or client the confidence that you've looked at the full extent of the problem. The more you share this with stakeholders, the more likely you are to make sure nothing is missing. This is what an issue tree looks like. Nothing fancy, just boxes on a page. But by being systematic, we can ensure that a problem is dissected properly. Let's use an example to see how an issue tree is used in practice. Meet Martin. Martin has just joined the Oldbury Local Council as a manager of the Performance Improvement Team. In his first week in post, Martin's boss, Sasha, has called him into her office to ask Martin's team to look at a particular problem. Street cleaning's expenditure was 500,000 pounds greater than expected last year. Martin and his team decide to build an issue tree to make sure they're accurately disaggregating the problem. An issue tree works by setting out the basic question to be resolved on the left-hand side, then breaking out this question into increasingly specific questions as you go from left to right. Before kicking off, the team reflects on good practices of creating issue trees. Good issue trees have questions at each level which are MISI. Mutually exclusive means that questions can be answered without reference to other questions in the same level, and collectively exhaustive means that when taken together, questions in the same level add up to the question to their left. When issue trees are not mutually exclusive, work streams become tangled together with minor changes to one part of the answer affecting other parts of the problem solving. If they are not collectively exhaustive, then important analyses may be missed. The team first inserts the problem to be disaggregated into the left-hand box. For costs, the team breaks this down into pay and non-pay costs. Pay costs were £400,000 over budget, and non-pay costs were only £100,000 over budget. Already we have a strong steer that much of our solution lies in pay costs. Now you might be asking how long should an issue tree be? This could conceivably go on and on. We would suggest an issue tree be two to four branches long, which tends to be long enough to help you unlock the general questions that will lead to hypotheses. Once the tree is specific enough to assign resources to, that's a reasonable place to be. Martin and his team feel that one more level of branches should be enough to help them assign work streams for the project and give Sasha the confidence that the problem is being looked at thoroughly. For pay costs, Martin and the team consider whole time equivalents, locum, and overtime costs. This should help the team pinpoint their efforts. From this, they may find out that the unit is either overstaffed or understaffed. For non-pay costs, the team considers activity levels to understand variable and non-variable non-pay costs. An example of variable non-pay costs would be plastic bags, which you would expect to increase as activity increases, whereas a non-variable cost would be something like the IT system, which shouldn't need to be invested in as activity increases. The issue tree has now disaggregated the problem to a level which Martin and his team feel they have isolated issues to be addressed and can now divide the work between the team. Importantly, the team will continue to iterate as the analyses are completed. Remember, there is no single right answer to an issue tree, just so long as it has MISI. Have a go at doing it on your own. That's it from 2020 Delivery Academy. If you enjoyed the lesson, please leave a note below. Take care.